today I will be making some chicken and pork adobo and I recently discovered how much tastier it is when you mix the chicken with um, pork especially since we use a lot of white meat so just plain white chicken breasts um, sometimes does, doesn't, have, doesn't have that much flavor so adding some pork to it just adds a little bit more uh, juiciness to this uh, Filipino dish so uh, we're gonna start first with chopping the pork and the chicken breast into small pieces. I like them small pieces because then they kind of disintegrate a little bit more. So you get a little bit of that um, sort of torn up pieces of really tender meat at the bottom of the stew, which is very tasty. So I like chopping it in these small pieces. It makes it also easier to cook and easier for Rocket to eat. chicken and we've got our chopped pork cubes. So now all we need to do is to combine the meat and then to add some soy sauce, some vinegar, some salt, and pepper. And that's it. Most of the time the Filipino adobo is cooked with bay leaves. Unfortunately I ran out of bay leaves but it's okay it will still taste just as good. So all you need are these ingredients plus of course cooking oil. So let's first combine the meat. So now we've got them here. Now you want to sprinkle it with some salt and pepper. Give it a toss. And now, soy sauce. I say use about half a cup. There we go. And use the same amount for the vinegar. Now 
I know it seems like a lot, but we're actually going to add two cups of water to this mix while it's cooking. And basically, it's going to be dry adobo, so we're going to let the meat kind of just soak in all the flavor until there is uh, almost no more sauce, but just like a thick uh, stew sauce on the very bottom. And that's when you know that the meat is done, it's completely cooked, and you've got your chicken pork adobo, Visayan style, the way my mom used to make them. So let this soak for a little bit. Some actually let this marinate overnight, and of course that would take um, a lot longer, but it would make the meat taste a lot better. But you can do away with not having to let it marinate that long. So while you're letting this seep through the meat, you can now heat the stove. So I'm going to use a big dish like this just to make sure that it does not overflow and I've got enough room for everything to cook. And now we're going to turn on the heat. I put it on high, medium high. And um, the technique is always to make sure that your uh, pot is super hot and then you add your oil and then make sure that the oil is super hot before you add everything else. That way, um, it just kind of tastes better. I don't know. <laughs> so after waiting about two minutes or so on medium high heat, you can now add the oil. I like to use olive oil because obviously it's a lot healthier. And we take uh, one third cup of olive oil. Remember, we're cooking a lot of meat, so we're gonna need some oil in there. Let that get really, really hot first. If you're scared of getting burned by the supremely hot oil, you can first lower uh, the temperature on your stove before you drop in the meat, and then just turn it back on high after you've already dropped it in there. Yes, baby? I know, I did. I burned my hand. Well, I always burn my hand cooking. I think that's part of my cooking a lot. Huh? What? My thumb? I know, that's why mommy's being careful now and she's um, telling everyone to be careful too with hot oil. Thank you baby for reminding me. <laughs> All right, okay, so now we're gonna put this in the pot. So start first by using one of these kinds of um, spoons when you're cooking so that you just put in the meat. There's still some of the marinade sauce here that I've left behind because we want to first cook the meat just on its own absorbed juices with the marinade initially. So do this for about three minutes on high. Cover the pot and leave that to sizzle for about three minutes to five minutes before adding the rest of the marinade. So now we're going to mix what we have, and let me show you, I'll get my phone. So as you can see, it's now sizzling. So now what we want to do is just kind of mix that. So it's partially getting cooked. And now's the time that you want to add the rest of the marinade. Normally, this is also the time that you add the bay leaves. But we don't have the bay leaves, and if you don't have any bay leaves, no problemo. So we add the remaining mixture. Give it a little mix 
just to make sure everything is coated evenly and then cover it up and continue to cook for another five minutes. So after five minutes is done, uh, you can now see that the meat is, is stewing and now we add the water. So this is already one cup of water and then I'm gonna be adding another cup of water. So two cups of water. two cups of water added. Um, some people like their adobo a little soupy. I like it dry. And so I'm going to just leave this for about 15 minutes until it dries up. Sometimes it may take longer for it to uh, dry up. Um, it might take 20 minutes, it might take faster. So it all depends. So you can just keep looking at the pot. And once you see that the water has dried up, and the meat has basically absorbed all of the liquid that it's been cooking in, then you know that it's done. That's the Visayan way of um, cooking adobo. All right, so the adobo is now cooked and I will be eating it with some brown rice. Juicy and tasty. So this is the Visayan way. How my mom used to make adobo. And it is perfect with some inasang mungo or sautéed mung beans. Alright, we shall now eat. Bon appétit.